obviously the Fed meeting kicks off today, um, kind of a big week when we look at CPI and the Fed decision. But I want to focus on today first. What's your WEX word of the day? How do you see today shaping up? Well, the WEX word of the day is visibility because that's what's getting investors anxious about the next couple of days until we hear from the Fed and CPI. I think investors are anxious and they want visibility. All right, so looking for some visibility. We got some visibility yesterday from Apple. We've been waiting for WWDC and their big artificial intelligence unveil. Stock closed down 2%. I want to get your take on what you heard and what you saw and what you think about the stock. Well, you know, uh, you know Apple is one of our granny shots. Uh, it's a stock that we think investors need to really hold for the long term. The company has always been at the center of everything that's happening around a consumer and new technologies. So to me, uh, uh, you know, I, there might have been some head scratching because these features may not be part of someone's life just yet. But as you know, Apple gets a lot of these things right. All right. So by the way, for the audience, your granny shot, it's uh, kind of like almost a, a very easy shot. You think it's almost a no brainer when it comes to that stock, right? That's right. I think yeah. investors should look at it as a core portfolio holding. You know, we the granny shots is basically a thematic portfolio that buys the strongest stocks in a specific theme. So when you think of AI and millennials, Apple and NVIDIA and Tesla, I mean, they're really at the center of that. All right. But your sector picks when it comes to the AI trader, NVIDIA, uh, Cadence, Arm, AMD. Why isn't Apple in there if you believe that it's a core holding and obviously they're pushing into the AI space? Uh, well, mainly because Apple is much more than just an AI company. So uh, I don't think it's intentional that we left out Apple when we talk about AI trades. But when when our clients are looking for direct beta exposure, you know, to them, the complex is NVIDIA and then stocks with high correlations to NVIDIA, which are the ones that we actually listed. All right. So, Tom, know what you're intentional about? Small caps. You've been one of the biggest bulls when it comes to small caps, specifically the IWM ETF. I'm just looking at the small caps since the last Fed decision. Um, they're up 3 percent. The rest of the market's up about 6.5 percent. They've been lagging all year long. Is there still a case for small caps to rally as much as 50 percent this year in your mind? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, one thing investors have to keep in mind is small caps get hampered when investors worry about lack of visibility. You know, when the Fed uh, begins to cut, and we actually have shown this to our clients, and the number of expected cuts begins to creep up, that has been correlated with the IWM outperforming the broader market. So the reality is the stock market is saying, look, I don't want to touch small caps until the Fed starts cutting. But in the meantime, small caps have better earnings growth, you know, close to 19% in the Russell 2000 versus around 9% for the S&P. And the median P.E. multiple is actually around 10 times in the Russell 2000 compared to 16 times for the S&P. So better growth, lower multiples. Um, I mean, I think it's a great risk reward for investors right now. But aren't they also more rate sensitive and also more sensitive to the higher cost of capital and the higher for longer environment? I mean, you keep saying that investors don't want to touch them until the Fed starts cutting. We don't have any clarity. We might get some answers tomorrow, but it's unlikely. The Fed's been very clear. They're data dependent. Sure. But I think what you've just described, which is higher cost of money uh, or, you know, a, a high bar for borrowing money. I mean, that's the existing condition. So when the Fed starts cutting, you know, that starts to ease. What would you what would investors benefit from is having exposure to things that are levered to an easing of financial conditions that would actually argue for small caps. So it's a bit of a waiting game. But boy, I mean, I don't know anyone who's made money trying to trade this week to week. Um, any great ideas. All the great ideas take time to work. I mean, wow. Fair enough there. Um, is there any part of the small caps that you think are better than others? I mean, all small caps aren't created equal. Well, you know, one thing I think investors have to keep in mind is that they might think a small cap is like a weak company. But actually, small caps, especially in the Russell 2000, tend to be very strong companies that dominate a smaller market. So that's why, you know, they're Wait, Tom, not a trillion dollar company, but they might be number one.